like I said before, welcome back from lunch. And now I would like to g give over to Remo Rinkelin, who will tell us something about updates for network devices. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. Um, got a question for you guys first. Who considers himself more a networker than a sysadmin? Oh, OK. Three, four guys, five. All right, cool. Um, well, I'm a networker too, so that's why I thought I would ask. Um, the topic here is Netty, obviously. It's not the sixth uh, OS, um, OSMC. I'm sorry about that. I took the wrong logo somehow. I could have. I was really sure I was taking the right one. Obviously, I was not. So don't worry. Those slides are not three years old. <laughs> some pictures are, but there is some news to it in any case. And uh, yeah, well, let's get started. I do have an agenda, and it's not too complicated. So. First top or the first section is what is Netty about? What is it? How does it work? And then what you what you get out of it? Because um, as I said, network discovery stands for uh, Netty stands for network discovery, which means it literally discovers your network. And I could put it in another way. I could put it like there is life before monitoring, or there is something out there before you monitor it. And I think that's where I come into play. So. Um, First of all, maybe I should also tell you what changed on my side, because um, this is the regular Xing uh, page of, of my profile. And uh, you can see I, I added some icons here to show you what I was con uh, concerned with, uh, working with. So I, st I started pretty much 20 years ago. Uh, I started work at the, uh, a bank now called UBS. It had three different names before that. Um, so I, I really started working with Net Nortel Gear, which has become a Vaya now. I then got outsourced to an American company, which is Dell now. Um, I managed to change internal accounts and live in Florida for two years. And that's where I really started uh, thinking about big networks and big projects, because I was a project manager and concerned with the rollout across four states. And you can imagine, you don't just drive up three states to fix something. So you really want to be aware of, of your whole IT infrastructure from a central point. So that's where I sort of had an idea. Then I came back to Switzerland after two years. I um, briefly slipped into the security department and hooked the UBS investment bank up to the internet. You can imagine I was quite nervous, but obviously it went well because you haven't heard of it. <laughs> so yeah, that, that went well. Nevertheless, um, I figured it's time to move on and uh, change jobs again. Really getting involved with uh, Cisco gear, which obviously every networker knows. And that's when I really could get started with Netty. And then uh, after seven years staying there, I joined HP, became a pre-sales um, solution architect. And well, it was interesting. I learned a lot. I think I managed to bring Netty to the next level doing this job. But fortunately, I, I left HP in April, which allowed me to work solely on Netty and be a lot more honest, too. So I, don't, I really know what I'm talking about now. Let's put it this way. So what is Netty? OK, we heard it's network discovery. Basically, it goes out there, discovers all your IT infrastructure via SNMP, more or less, which don't necessarily have to be networking devices. You can also use it for printers if you want, I mean, to a certain extent. I had enough printers to test with the last six years. So, um, Also, you can discover ESX servers or hypervisors if you enable SNMP, and you can find VMs on those hypervisors and find out where they really enter the network. So that's usually one of the more um, current topics because the network border is not black and white anymore. It's sort of a gray zone, especially now with SDN coming up. Um, the, the whole thing, SDN is like cloud three years ago. Everybody talks about it, but everybody means something else. So it's, it's sort of, yeah, we will see where it goes. But I'm pretty sure you'll still need tools that get the idea of your, or what your IT infrastructure looks like in order to have a stable environment on top of it. So SDN, I don't think, will solve all those needs or remove all those needs, more so. Okay, so. Netty has 
the discovery factor, it can be used for monitoring and surveillance and all that, but it does more. It does, for example, it will save the configurations of your switches in case they burn up. Then you can uh, update the new switch with the old config and then you're up and running again, for example. So there's a lot more to it than just, you know, know what out, what's out there. Now, I always say I'm not a programmer. Um, I u just used to be a networker with a problem that I had to solve, and that's part of it. So, um, of course, we, we were uh, rebuilding uh, the whole network where I started Nedi, and as you can see, I did have a lot of patching to do just to figure out which patch cable goes where. It was a big task, and um, the environment was really special. You, you've seen it on the timeline before. Um, that's actually an old slide, but it, nevertheless, it's interesting because you can see that's a big uh, experimental hall, we call it. Those are concrete blocks, so they're like up to 50 tons each. And here in the front, there is a, a gap, you can see here, it, it actually goes uh, down another floor and then downstairs. You can see here a scientist inside a particle accelerator. So it's a proton accelerator. Obviously shut off, otherwise the scientist wouldn't be in here. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, just on a side note, we had a fiber cable running uh, run in here, and it would go blind every six months because of the radiation. So we had to exchange the fiber cable. That's quite, yeah, it's not very obvious, but those are the kind of things you had to deal with. So this is the Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland. It's, it's not the CERN, they, they work together, but it's a much smaller scale, obviously. Um, that proton accelerator resides in here. There is an electron accelerator, that's another one, and they're building, actually it's quite finished now, a new one here, a linear accelerator shooting to the uh, neighboring village, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, not in the news yet, so all is fine. <laughs> but you can see, this is the kind of network Nedi grew up in, and um, we're talking about 90 buildings or so, and it was like three guys managing this whole network having scientists as customers. It was interesting, <laughs> challenging at times. Um, of course, we also needed to be um, sort of aware of which node is in which building, because sometimes they would also attack us. So we had once, we had a, you know what an, an oscilloscope is? There used to be those big clunky things with a small screen, like a phablet these days, just displaying a waveform. Uh, the more modern version is using Windows NT still and has an LCD and one of those was attacking us because <laughs> NT couldn't be patched because it was certified for this. So as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to find yeah, where is something connected to. So that's also where Nedi comes into play. I have a marketing slide and it's also an old one, um, but it's the only one, don't worry about it basically should tell you what Nedi is focused on. And if you read it the right way, it's English, uh, uh, that's a good thing. Um, it also tells you that I'm a lazy guy. Because <laughs> I wasn't really, you know, I didn't want to document everything because documentation is only correct the first day you do it, if at all. And afterwards it just changes. Um, so I decided to start Nedi because we didn't have the tools back then. I mean, this was, 10 years ago now, or even more, 12 years. Um, we wanted a customized tool that really helps us uh, leveraging our uh, manpower, because we were only three guys. And I, I think it, it worked quite well here in this environment, and then I started um, adding new features, supporting new vendors, and so with that, Nedi could become a tool that could be used uh, even outside this facility. So how does it work? Right. Well, let's have a quick look at the architecture. Again, this is an older slide. Um, the backend is still an SQL database. The news about that is it can be Postgres now. It, it's not restricted to, to uh, MySQL anymore. So the backend, um, the discovery is written in Perl with everything to it. Um, it's all running in the background. You don't have to worry about it. You can start it once a day or every hour, depending on the size of your network also depending on how many parallel discoveries you want to do. Um, the idea is that Nedi is very quiet, you shouldn't notice it, it just does its stuff in the background. There is a few files I need, 
namely the configuration file, obviously. You need to tell certain things, which yeah is standard. Then we have some seed list, uh, which defines the entry points where the discovery sh should start. We have definition files. That's how I tell Netty how to discover a certain device. And OUI, uh, those are an IAB, are triple, IEEE um, um, database, I would say. Or, well, it's, it's the registration for MAC addresses, so you can find out which vendor belongs a MAC address to. That's also factored in within the discovery. Part of the data is stored in RRD files, but the majority of the data obviously is stored in the back end itself. But the RRD files are a nice add-on. And um, the difference between most other tools using RRD is that Netty uses the discovery interval for the, the RRD interval. So you don't get the five minute peaks you're looking for. You get the baseline, but you get it from every interface in the network. So that's the trade-off, but th also that's the benefit, because you can still add uh, other tools monitoring certain important interfaces to get the whole picture. And then everything is tied together with a front end written in PHP, some JavaScript, and some other text files supporting the GUI, more or less. The discovery process, um, it's an abbreviated version. You don't have to worry, we go through every step. But it's three sort of, um, it's, it can be divided into three stages of the discovery process. First of all, the initialization. We'll read all the configuration files, start with the seed files, and then, um, yeah, prepare everything. Then we do have this part where we go to every device, collect information, find the neighbors, collect uh, or queue the neighbors, and stuff like that. So this is sort of the circular process which the whole discovery really persists of. And then we have the, uh, the finalizing part. I'm sort of calculating the, those top graphs. Those are graphs that are really accumulating all the, uh, the discovered data into one single graph. For example, how many computers are in your network? How much traffic do you have on the perimeter of your network? Uh, meaning entering and exiting the network. And stuff like that. So that's done at the very end. I also used to calculate all the nodes or computers from the network, because I'm reading all the forwarding tables, all the ARP tables, sort of mash them up together, and then you know which computer is on which port. Um, I did that at the end because I need to identify links, because you don't want to have nodes and uplinks, because that's just not right. But um, I got to test this for a while now on a university in Switzerland, and the process, the discovery process would die when it started node calculation, because the memory uh, demands increased, and I'm using OpenBSD uh, for that, usually. So it would kill the thread because it was eating up too much memory. A single thread cannot have that much memory. So I was forced in to look into it, uh, and fortunately, I could remove this whole thing now from the end. It's done during the discovery now. And I could decrease the memory footprint. It was 400 megs, which is not a lot today, right? Firefox uses 400 megs, and it's quite normal. Um, <laughs> I could decrease it to 100 megs for a network that has 600 switches, 1,800 access or 1,500 access points, and around 40,000 computers on it. So it's quite a large network. And I could increase uh, the whole efficiency by factor of four, which is quite cool. So the discovery is one part of Netty. Netty can still do some monitoring, but don't get too excited. It's not, I think it's not what you're used to it. Because I think a networker is quite happy when he sees the network, the topology. He knows how many switches he's really have to look after. Um, he doesn't want every single uh, CPU or temperature sensor in every single location. I think that's not what, what's important to us, or to me at least. My, there is other people thinking differently, of course. So I say usually, well, let the discovery collect everything, let's just actively check what's alive, like every t two or five minutes, what, what is still alive, and everything else should be reported via syslog or traps, and yeah, that's the discovery, and that's the monitoring daemon, checking everything is alive. So this way, I found it very um, uh, efficient to monitor big networks, which usually, imagine you have a network, and then you have a satellite side or a, a remote side, 
You don't want to have several threads going across the van link, discovering everything or monitoring like 30,000 sensors. Of course, you could do an agent uh, distributed environment, and, but it gets complicated, as you probably all know. So that's why I'm keeping it this way. Nevertheless, this is quite a recent addition now. We can have certain events generate, if you follow this line through, you can generate events in the events database, but you can have it forwarded via email. You can have monitoring alerts forwarded by email or SMS and stuff like that. So there is a framework you can use to be informed about certain things. That might be things like a module changed in a switch. Because those are the things you don't usually monitor. But if a module, just a module dies, or for example, you have a stack of switches and one switch dies, the switch still re responds to your pings, but you, you don't even necessarily know that one unit died. So this way you can trigger s such alerts just by with this framework. Um, well, if you have questions, feel free to ask. We can also discuss later. Um, I know it looks a bit complicated at first, but I think it's once you know that you have sources, you follow it through, and then you have some exit points, it should be fairly easy to understand. Also, Nady features some um, hookups into Nagios or whatever uh, other monitoring tools you're using, so it, it doesn't have to be a standalone solution either. So that's like the inner workings of Nady so far. Now, well, let's sort of summarize what I've just said. So it can be divided into more or less three parts. The discovery, which is a, well, it's, it's like the real benefit of Netty. It really discovers the network. It's not just yet another monitoring tool. It really goes out there and tells you what you got. This goes as far as lifecycle management. I'm working on a project right now, which uh, the customer wants to get the whole maintenance spreadsheet to, he's getting from the partner into Nedi and compare, okay, which devices do I really have and which do I pay maintenance for? So that, that really should add up, right? Otherwise, either you have unmaintained uh, devices in the network that are important or you're paying too much maintenance for devices that don't even exist. So I think this is going to be quite an interesting uh, topic and it's m maybe not so much for you guys, but for your managers, it's really important to stay on top of this. Right, so let's move on to the pretty or not so pretty pictures, depending on <laughs> what expectations you have. I find it, the GUI, again, is um, sometimes it's a bit old fashioned, I would say. But keep in mind, Nedi, the archive, is only three and a half megabytes in size still. So there is, and I think two of it uh, are pictures. <laughs> so that's really how lean it is. And, I don't want to blow it up or make it bloat. There is enough bloat out there. Um, so everything is done pretty much in HTML. I'm in the progress of moving everything to HTML5, getting rid, rid of the quirks, stuff like that. But So it's, it's maybe old-fashioned, but nevertheless, it's quite fast for the most things you want to do with it. One of the things that might not be that obvious, if you look at a list of nodes, those are computers on the network. You have those date columns that are colored. So the first column means, when has this node been detected for the first time? And the second one is, when it has been detected for the last time? So if you have a fairly recent first time or first seen date, it's green like a fresh fruit. That's how you can relate to it. If it's turning red, it's, yeah, it's sort of dying. So you have a, a setting that you can define, like 30 days is the default. If the node hasn't been seen on your network for 30 days, it will just be deleted or retired. Um, the longer this period is in between, the more blue you get. And I find it interesting when you go diving, it's everything is so quiet and you're floating around. That's the kind of thing I wanted to express with that. So it looks a bit playful, but when you start working with lists, then you can sort it, for example, or not, and then you see immediately when a new node has come into your network, for example. So this will help you. Once you get used to it, it's really um, a much better way to look at such m amounts of data. This is uh, uh, another aspect of Nedi. So you have 
several sections in the GUI to use Netty. And um, they're really tied to the tables I'm using for the database. So we have devices, which are network devices usually. We have interfaces, which, <laughs> yeah, well, what do I need to say? It's all the interfaces belonging to those devices. Then we have modules, which hold all those plugins or transceivers or whatnot. You, you plug into a switch um, in there. And the same goes for the GUI. So you can really look at your modules list, filter for certain devices or certain things. Or here in this example, I'm using the devices list. And I can filter on certain criterions here. You have up to four dynamically assignable uh, filters. And you can use regular expressions. So this is really powerful in the end, if you want to narrow down what you're looking at. You can select the columns here. Um, that you want to see down here. And it's not JavaScript. This is all really HTML talking to PHP and, and MySQ or SQL to the back end directly. That's why um, you, might, you might not find it intuitive to select the columns up here. But I think there is a lot of uh, advantages to that as well um, than being just only intuitive. Here we can see what the device looks like. That's also a fairly recent addition that you can actually get some visual information. I'm not breaking it down to the single module you're seeing, but nevertheless, it gives you a good a sense of what devices you're looking at. Now, here we have the population per device. So how many MAC addresses uh, reside on this switch, in other words? Here we see a little log uh, display. This button means that's when the device has been rebooted. That's when it's been discovered the first time. That's when the configuration was backed up. That's when it's been seen the last time, and so forth. Another topic we've heard this morning, actually, with um, the uh, SNMP uh, plugin uh, to check network uh, equipment. Uh, access ports free, that's a big topic here as well for me, of course. And there is several ways you can uh, check how many access ports are free. There is this counter, the timestamp you can check on the switch. But unfortunately, you lose that when you reboot the switch. So you only see that that port hasn't changed since the switch is up and running. So there is more uh, um, uh, alternatives here in Netty that you can use to, to verify how many, for example, how many uh, MAC addresses do you have? Has this port a MAC address learned or not? Or uh, has it seen traffic on the interface? So there are sev several approaches to that uh, problem. A lot of those big shot management tools, which Nady is not, it's, it's, um, it's not, I wouldn't consider it a full-fledged management tools. Um, for example, those I, I had to sell for my former employer, they were big, and I mean really gigabyte big. <laughs> and uh, they could do a lot, especially to the vendor's own products, of course. You could do firmware upgrades and stuff like that. You can do a lot of configuration stuff. Netty cannot do all that. It can send scripts to devices. You can do batch stuff, but not in the depth. But I would say it will cover 80% of all the needs out there, and, and that's pretty good. And I don't even want to go there to support all that, because it's just way too much work. It doesn't scale uh, for one person or my community to really get all those features up and running and maintain them. Um, and another thing is that those management tools have reports, so you have your uh, inventory of your uh, network infrastructure, and then you can generate a report. You can even email that once a week. And I've been asked to do that too, but I have a different uh, um, approach to those reporting stuff. I mean, reporting is important. Yeah. Uh, sounds funny, but yeah, that's the. <laughs> so I look at reports to be interactive. So they're not just static reports that you can email once a week. My reports, you can click on and drill down and go to those other tables and in investigate what you're actually seeing. So for example, we have a report counting all the duplicate node names, meaning all DNS names that are, you know, well, like here, we have two DNS entries for Phoenix Net ECH, for example. I can click on that and check out why is that. So that's much more useful, I think, than static reports. And in this case, we can see this is a Dell MAC address, Phoenix, uh, coming in on the wired side. And then we do have an Intel, same name. 
same time frame, they're overlapping. So this is not just a node that has been exchanged. And also, this one's coming in over wireless. So this is most likely a notebook entering the network on, with the cable, and then it's on the wireless as well. So that's how you can really leverage the whole idea of Netty. Of course, you can still print reports into a PDF or on paper. You can add the last map, for example, and have nice pie charts sent to your manager. We can still do that. OK, so that's just so you know that the reports are not another reporting part. It's all tied together. Now, um, as I said, I started this in 2001, um, and I was lazy, and I didn't like drawing network drawings, because it's just never accurate anyways. Um, this is us, um, well, my missus and me, uh, on a vacation on an island, and that's not when I had the idea, but I think those pictures will tell you the best. Uh, way what I thought of about back then. So I'm using the SNMP location string to make the network topology aware. And the string, I'm sorry it's on the bottom, but um, we, we will get the slides. First entry here is separated by uh, semicolons. Um, it tells you, or you should enter what region the device belongs to, what city, what building or the street address, what floor, and in which room and which rack for example, or let's say which room. And uh, this will sort of make Nettie aware how to look at your devices. Now people ask me, well, could we extend this? Where in the rack is it? Well, if you add the height in within the rack, I took it one step further, you can have the racks drawn automatically. And you don't have to sort of edit this manually. All you need to do is enter this location string in the device and that's what you get. So I think this is quite powerful. And if you remove the device and delete it from Netty, the whole rack will disappear, or the spot will be freed up. Um, I also did look into geocoding and uh, Google Maps. And this is an interesting uh, location or set of locations. It's where I used to live and used to work. And it's all near the German border. and um, sort of moving closer to Zurich somehow. Yeah, but this also allows you to document your network, document your sites. Um, you can mission, mix up the whole uh, information and even use it for monitoring as well. I'll show you that in a sec. But there was a drawback. Um, Google does not allow you to cache maps inside your network, and they limit the, the amount of static maps, which are those. Uh, to a thousand per day, and after that you get a placeholder, and you really should, or you, you you should buy an API key uh, to use this service in, on a larger scale, and this API key costs uh, a mere eight thousand dollars a year. Of course, I would m much rather have this kind of money. Um, <laughs> so I was looking for alternatives, and. Um, I like the kind of uh, looking at those minimaps because it gives you a sense of, of uh, yeah, your overall uh, environment. And also, if you click on a location and you drill down, those are um, events summaries. They will adapt to what you're seeing. So you can isolate events or, or problems to your sites. Again, this is all based on those location strings. You don't need to spend hours defining your sites. That's all automatic. So I did do some extra work on my internal maps, which are those. And it only took me like 12 years to get them right. <laughs> and I do have much uh, more gray hair because of that. But I think now it's, it's usable. And also, I added um, the possibility to use them inline. So you can pretty much use them everywhere within Netty as well. This is the first approach to using uh, OpenStreetMaps. And it's quite interesting. And I also can cache those on the Netty server, which makes them really fast. And then a guy from South Africa said, well, could you add the weather? <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, it, it, it's really a, an interesting um, concept, because they have pretty hard, uh, harsh or hard thunderstorms or storms down there. And when the remote side dives, 
If he sees the weather, he knows he doesn't have to worry. It will come back up. <laughs> so I use um, a weather service to display the weather in real time on your site as well. Again, this is like two mouse clicks. You don't need to configure a whole lot to get this. Another thing I said, you can define the building. You see the floors. You see which device uh, is on which floor. There is new options. You can display how many users are on which device, how many free ports do you have on the switch, and stuff like that. So this is all like getting the, the greater benefit of Netty. Uh, yeah. Now, I said I improved the maps. So those pictures you saw earlier, they can also be used in maps now. You can draw weather maps. They're not as pretty as, as other um, products, but at least you don't have, again, you don't have to configure them. They're all dynamic. So you see the link usage here on, in this construct. Um, another example here, this is actually the uh, device status. You see all the VLANs, you see some system relevant information, and now you also have the most recent events and the neighbor map, the node map, and there is a group map. Uh, for those of you who know Cisco, there is, a, for example, the VTP group. So you can draw the map of the VTP group, but you can also use it in other ways. And this is a very interesting map, and I'm particularly proud of it because, well, you saw 2011. I think that's when I was here for the last time. And I was asked, well, can you draw maps from networks that do not support discovery protocols? And I'm like, well, yeah, I tried. Um, it's not that easy, and I don't think it's possible to draw them accurately. Well, it happens. Earlier this year, I had a, a customer wanting exactly that. So he had a, a non, well, it, it was, it was a, a network that persisted of devices that are not so common, and hence they didn't really support LDP, for example. So I had to come up with a way to do this anyways. And I think I made it, um, despite my, my doubts. Um, the problem is, and I don't know how much you know about bridge forwarding tables and, and the whole layer two stuff, switches are bridges really. They learn MAC addresses on a port and keep them in a table. And this uh, is aged out after 300 seconds by default. You can change that, but that's usually what the switch does. Meaning, so you, let's say you have a switch here, learning all the MACs from the uplink, for example, and then um, discarding them again when they age out. So every device has some view of the network but none of those devices see the whole network every time or all the time the way it really is. So you need to cache this information. You need to make sure you don't um, forget any node in this calculation. And this is about 200 devices in a flat network. And if you're missing one MAC address, you pretty much make a wrong link or create a, a wrong link if you try to do this automatically. So the accuracy here is about 95 to 98%. Um, and so far, the project has been really successful. And we'll see if I manage to get the rest out of the way as well. But I have to say now, and I told this person already, well, it is possible after all. So um, yeah, quite interesting too. OK. Now we have all this location awareness built in for free, so to speak, right? So we have the possibility to create locations with geocoding. We can also use, um, Nedi will generate the folder structure for your network automatically. So this is CH for Switzerland. The city gets its own folder. And then you can upload documentation to that folder. So meaning, yeah, you can use Nedi as a sort of DMS to document your network. And you can add screenshots, for example, of this room or rack or whatever. And if you upload it to the right location, Nedi will display this again within the topology view. And it's actually being used. I'm not just talking marketing bullshit. <laughs> Did that long enough. So that's all in, uh, nice and good. So we have the topology under control. What also changed from the previous version of Netty is that I'm introducing more and more, uh, or I did introduce classes. So here, this example shows you the cl uh, classes I've introduced for modules. So um, most devices support um, 
listing all the modules, meaning the line cards, transceivers, or uh, fan trays, power supplies, and so forth. This uh, makes it much easier to distinguish what you're actually looking at. And it also enabled me to detect stacks. Does everybody know what a stack is? I mentioned it before. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if you talk about virtualization, if, if you virtualize something in the network, it's usually not that you create VMs on a switch. It's more like you're adding two or three switches together to one virtual switch. So it's the other way around, really. Um, you have one device to manage. This whole thing becomes one device with one IP address. Makes it much easier for the network, the lazy networker, to manage uh, a device. It also allows you for redundancy, because you can hook up a host, a server, to two switches. And then uh, if one fails, it's still uh, connected. But it's not so easy to sort of treat them right in the management tool, because you only have one IP address. How do you detect if it's a stack or not? Well, it's, it's, it's fairly easy with this classification, because this one, that's a chassis. And that's actually a switch within a stack. And if I have more than one chassis, I obviously have a stack. So that's the way it works. And so far, it's been uh, really working well. This is actually a network with HP net, uh, network equipment, but it also works for Cisco. And um, yeah, we will see what other vendors I can support. Another thing is mm, getting more and more important, that is wireless, of course. And it happens that <laughs> pretty much every wireless controller is like a proprietary box controlling hundreds of access points. And it's not so easy to get this thing into the whole picture. Now, I had the chance to um, play and work with uh, a number of access or uh, wireless controllers. And I could make it work in that you can discover the controller, it will discover the access points, and discover the nodes connected to those access points. And this is fairly easy to check because this is, again, this device status. You can click on this, which will reveal the access points controlled by this controller. You could also add a column now to see the wireless clients. And um, this has been uh, very uh, successful so far. And if you click on the access point, you can also go back to the controller. With LDP, usually, or with other means, I can learn where is this access point connected to the network, to the switch to get the full circle of your wired and wireless infrastructure. And in the end, you can create a node list, for example. And this is really a, a, an example of different access controllers, namely Aruba. Well, OpenWRT I have at home to play with. It's quite cool. Uh, Cisco and HP controllers. And they're all in the same GUI, showing you the nodes with uh, signal strength, for example. Um, there will be more coming but um, it's quite some work to get them done properly. Now, config backup is something I mentioned. So you want to be up and running again when a switch blows up, right? Um, so it's important to see when has the configuration been backed up. Now, there is another thing. You have a switch, you change configuration, you forget to save it. And then the switch will reboot eventually and load the old config again and not the one you set, right? So I added a new feature, checking when was the configuration saved to the flash on the switch. And this light bulb will turn um, orange if it's uh, not saved, for example. So even if you don't back up the configuration, at least you know when you're in trouble when a switch reboots. So that's al also that's a new feature um, you can leverage pretty much out of the box. Now, OK. You have your network, Netty discovers once an hour or so, and then you have a big, big rework of a building or something. And then you would like to sort of snapshot this whole state, right? Because when you're in the progress or in the process of removing switches, moving around, changing patches, and then, oh, eh, what was it like before? So that's, it happened to me. So that's why I figured it would be nice to sort of have this snapshot and go back in time to see what the network used to look like when it was working. Um, so there is a new feature in there. It, it's it accidentally or incidentally called uh, System Snapshot. Or, yeah. You can create snapshots from your current database. And you do that once a year, and you could 
sort of compare the progress of your network evolution over time. But it goes further. If you look at those snapshots, they're all very different, right? I mean, we have 34 no, uh, devices here, we have 2,000 devices here, 1,400 devices here. So those are all different networks. Because NETI allows you to import a database into a snapshot, and this way you can store several networks, so to speak, on your notebook. And if you're on the train and need to look up something, you can just pull up that network and, yeah, find out what it looks like. So that's a quite a powerful feature uh, that evolved to be, yeah, what it is now. Also, wireless is getting more important. So I started supporting uh, phones. Uh, it's just a simple web page. Uh, that one actually uses the IP address that is sent to the web server to detect where it is connected to. And then you can check um, the port status and some statistics of that interface. This could be particularly interesting as well, not exactly on an Android phone, for example, as displayed here, but also on a, on a user's PC, when you need to check, is this PC hooked up to the network correctly? If you have a, big, a bigger device, a tablet, for example, what changed here is that you don't have the menus anymore, you have buttons which makes it fairly easy to use on a tablet. Um, yeah, so that's, you can use it on a tablet and uh, should help if you're running around in, in your enterprise fixing problems. Speaking of fixing problems, troubleshooting with Netty. Um, again, there is, I think that's more your business, right? You're monitoring everything, you're, you find faults and stuff like that, but then you, find it's a network problem, you dispatch the networking guy, and then I think again that's when you go back to NETI as well. Because what NETI does, I said, it will discover the network, it will get all the counters, not every five minutes, but you still get the idea of, for example, you want to know how many broadcasts do I have on my uplinks, for example. Because I've seen networks having a thousand broadcasts per second. This can't be healthy, right? I mean. It, it, and it's not, it shouldn't be necessary, really. So this way, you can draw a quick map and display the broadcast, for example. Again, this is done within seconds. You don't need to prepare the whole thing. Um, I think that's one of the benefits. You can also correlate, and I mentioned those top graphs at the beginning. So here we can see the whole access traffic on your network, I'm talking about 300 megabytes per second. So obviously, this is a backup running. We can correlate it with the overall errors of your network. And you see, well, there's not much change. There is a peak here, but it's gone, and now it's all good. So your network seems to be fine. Um, looking at the total discards, yeah, there is an increase in discards, but it's only a few percent, really. I mean, it's gone from 250 to 300, and that's not a lot of discards either. So your components are not overloaded either, so it should be all fine. But this is a quick overview you get, like. It depends um, what you're looking for, but usually you detect most problems by detecting changes of the normal, I would say. Nonetheless, um, with the current NETI version, you can define thresholds and stuff like that as well. Um, it used to be that you just define a global policy and then let it run. But um, it, it's got a bit more so sophisticated. Now, let's say you have a first level support, a help desk. I don't think it's possible to tell the help desk guy picking up the phone to look on a switch port and make sure that the switch port is okay, right? Because I'm not sure all the help desk guys or first level support guys understand what uh, discards are or errors or broadcasts. So they would probably sooner call the network guy than necessary. Not sure if you all agree, but I think that's my experience. And that's why I came up with this sort of graph, it's a new graph. It can be found in several um, screens in NETI. Um, you, we saw it before, so just in case you were wondering. This is um, the total counters and the last counters found during the last discovery of certain interface values. Namely here, traffic in, traffic out, er uh, errors in, error out, discard in, discard out, and broadcasts. By the way, I'm only uh, looking for inbound broadcasts because I'm interested 
in who is sending broadcasts into the network. I don't care about outgoing broadcasts. But what's important is who is sending them in to my network. So as long as you see a triangle or some form pointing into this direction, you're fine. This port is sending and receiving traffic. But if this shape, whatever form it will take, points more d d downwards, then something is not right with this port. And I think this is fairly simple to explain to any person, be non-technical or, or technical. Uh, you get a first glance and you know, okay, now it's not, doesn't seem like it's this network port. It can still be the network behind it, but you know you don't have to look any further here. I said Nettie discovers hourly at best. Um, you can have still, you can have real-time graphs for certain interfaces you're troubleshooting, and now you can also select what you want to look at. For example, multicast, getting more and more important with all the uh, video streaming and, and app applications in that area. So you, you can really investigate on your real-time traffic as well. I said I would classify the modules, and I also started classifying events. So we have those different sources of events, like syslog and discovery events, security-related events, like new MAC addresses and stuff like that. So I'm giving every event a certain class, which shows up here. So we have the severity here. We have um, critical events, notifications, warnings, and also the classification. But it's still no fun to look at a list like that, right? Um, I can use the classification to detect, for example, configuration backup problems, changes, or new configurations. That's one possible use. But I can also aggregate those events. And here, for example, we can see, oh, we had an event where the temperature was too high on one of them devices. And you can filter all that. You can particularly look for something. And if you're investigating other problems, this might be another useful resource to see what was going on on the network at the time. So you might have extra uh, load of broadcasts at the time, which would explain a performance impact and stuff like that. So it's really stuff you usually don't see. You can get this via aggregation. There is other means of uh, visualizing it. This is just a simple uh, bar uh, picture combination here. For those who know Nettie, I don't know uh, who is working with it. The uh, latest version, I pretty much changed the whole node status page. The node status or a node is actually just a MAC address in your network. And it used to be uh, similar, but uh, you could not really see what belongs to the switch, where this MAC address was connected to, or what, what is related to the MAC address itself. Now here we can see this part here is the actual computer, server, whatever. This is the connection to the network device. And here you find this graph thing again. You find the link. Sometimes a computer is connected to a voice over IP phone, and then this is connected to the switch. So in that case, you would see a VoIP phone here as well. So you can sort of visualize how this node is connected. And this graph here shows you it's been connected with one gig full duplex up until here, but then it changed to 100 meg half, which could explain certain problems this computer is experiencing, as an example. Last but not least, um, so Nedi used to be standalone when I was using it, but more and more with all those new monitoring tools coming up, um, it, it was sort of pushed into a certain niche. And uh, I didn't mind. I mean, I didn't really think that it would prevail that long and, and even gain success uh, doing that, what it does, but it did. And so I sort of made Nettie more open towards other tools, so you can add easily you, links to other tools, for example, but also I have added means to import and export data, because Nettie will discover your network and then you can use this data in various ways to feed your monitoring tools, for example, or other stuff. So one way to export data, the classic, Excel spreadsheets, and um, it works quite well now, and even with the coloring and stuff like that. So you can export it to Excel. It's um, let me see. It's it's just a button, a button on the top. For those, 
Uh, of course, I don't have the menu right now. He, here, there is usually a button, Excel export, if the form does support it. So it's fairly easy to use as well. Um, another mean is a very simple API I wrote. Um, I'm looking at to make it, it more REST-like. It's not yet, but um, it allows you to send certain database queries to Netty and get some either JSON data back or CSV, whatever you want to use later on. So you can use that, for example, as well. Another recent addition is the callout. So you can, if you start Netty without any options, it will just discover the default gateway, for example. If you don't have any seeds, it will just try to find the default gateway, discover it, and that's what you get. Now with the discovery callout, you could, with minus X, add a command. And I'm just using echo to show what Netty tells this command as uh, arguments. So here we have this device here is existing, meaning it's not a new device, freshly discovered, but it existed before in the database. That's the name, that's the IP address, SNMP version, community, sysobject ID, and the description field. And with this information, you could use a script to generate new entries for your monitoring environment, for example. Fairly easy, very simple to do, and could help you uh, getting your dynamic network sorted out, for example. Yeah, and um, that's it. If you want to know more, here's the link. And if you have questions, fire away. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions, anyone? Do you integrate with rack tables? With? Rack tables. Rack tables. I'm afraid I don't know. It's an open source, uh, well, asset management system. system. Ah, okay. Right. There are cool other, I, I know of other integrations or other projects, but I don't think it should be too hard to do. Yeah, we could look at it. I asked, understood you right that uh, I can discover a network uh, transfer my data to, to my uh, central department, uh, put it into my database and have all the data, all the discovery in one database? Um, I'm not merging the data from two databases into one yet. I guess it could be done, but that, this has not been the focus so far. But are you asking about agents and uh, master sort of distributed like discovery? Like this, yes. There is something I prepared, I haven't really tested it yet, but you can have agents discovering the local network and you can have a master NETI console checking the agents and the status of each device <coughs> in the remote side. So there is a simple distributed monitoring is possible, but not you don't fetch all the data. Okay, just just in a moment, I can export the data and import it on my yeah. master node, yeah. and it's for example, uh, see, see the same. Yeah, ah, you could perfect. Do that. Hi, what's your best practice to discover a huge network site with a lot of remote sites? So, th those networks I know of. Um, one of them, for example, is using an interval of like four hours. I've seen six hours. And some are using up to 80 parallel threads to get all those remote sites. But um, I mean, we're talking about huge networks, really worldwide networks. And one of them even has up to a half a million nodes on it, or 20,000 switches and routers. And it still works. <laughs> I didn't know, but obviously it still works. You mentioned before that there is also a possibility to hook up Nagios to it. Yeah, there is um, a NAC pipe uh, function that has been supplied by a community member. I haven't tried it myself yet, but that's like one hook you can use to uh, pipe events from Nedi into Nagios. Thanks. 
Any more questions? Oh, let me show you one more thing, maybe. So here I did play with this before I started. This is a D3.js. And as you can see, I'm displaying a fairly big network here. Uh, that's the status or the CPU load of every switch and router in this network. So if a whole branch turns yellow, you probably have a large scale network problem there, like a loop or something. Um, so this helps if you have the topology awareness to identify or localize problems. Another interesting thing maybe in summertime would be to show the temperature. So we have one guy up here turning red, meaning it exceeded the threshold. Well, it's kind of hard to grab, but <laughs> you, you get the idea. <laughs> of course, this is only like, you know, eye candy and stuff, but um, the idea behind it was somebody asked me to get a JSON output for the topology. And I didn't want to just add the JSON output. I wanted to have something or getting something out of it. And that's what came out. So. <laughs> And I uh, have another screen here that's just to show you reports. Um, here we have a nice pie chart. Um, again, that's the same network. We see 1,400 HP devices. Those are all access points, by the way. And we have 659 Cisco devices. And I told you about the stacks, right? So if you count devices and um, you have a stack persisting of four switches, so how many devices do you have in your inventory? I mean, is it one because you're managing one? Or do you have four because you're paying maintenance for all four, right? So NETI allows you to split the stacks. So we have eight classes of devices. So this workgroup layer three switch is 288 devices, but it's counting individual uh, stack members as well. Just so you know, and might be interesting for some of you. Okay, that, that's really it now. <laughs> Thank you very much.